Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Kodi. I'm a consultant at Fertility Plus, Fertility Courses and Homerton Fertility Centre. Today I'm going to talk to you about a review on platelet-rich plasma, PRP in short. And let's look at some evidence and see how effective it is. And this was a paper published in Human Reproduction on platelet-rich plasma, another add-on getting out of hand, how can cl clinicians preserve the best interest of their patients? Now let's go back and see how PRP works. It's used extensively in regenerative medicine, in orthopedics, dermatology or aesthetic surgery. Platelets contain high amounts of cytokines, insulin-like growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, fibroblastic growth factor, epidermal growth factor interleukin-8, fibronectin, and think of what you want. And all of these seem to be concentrated in one area and they may initiate the healing process. And so if you have a look at the HFA side, they'll say add-ons have been trying to help couples achieve a pregnancy and with the PRP there have been recent additions such as intra-ovarian injection of PRP and intra-endometrial injection of PRP. So in reproductive medicine, what is considered to be an indication? Impending ovarian failure, unexplained implantation failure, thin endometrium, and in fact, all these conditions which have been listed, PRP has not been known to be a, tr a treatment based on evidence. And their lack of effective treatments has resulted in many opinions being given on a small number of observational cases. Now, PRP is produced by centrifuging your own blood. Growth factors are concentrated in alpha granules and those are concentrated and delivered at a certain site. And there are two types of PRP preparations that come in. One is leukocyte rich PRP preparation. And here the neutrophil concentration is higher than the baseline. And other is the leukocyte poor PRP preparations. In fact, Often PRP is also made in-house, which in fact leads to variability in concentration and composition. The question comes up is how effective has it been in improving ovarian reserves? And again, almost all the studies done, if you see here, are tend to be much smaller number and on a smaller number of cases. And again, we do not know whether these women improved because you had, uh, let's, uh, let's say, PRP or that you stimulated at a time when the antral follicle count was the best. And we know that. We know that if you stimulate women when the antral follicle count is good, you're more likely to get more eggs. Again, the question of after injection in about two or three cases, you saw FSH levels go down. Again, we know that FSH is variable. And even in women with fluctuating FSH, you'll see an up and down of levels of FSH going on. And in fact, these cases are very much observational. Looking at ovarian insufficiency, again, there are 15 studies, which, and some of them commented that they saw spontaneous pregnancy rates, which would increase. Stem cell research has also been tried and it increases undifferentiated cells and they have a capacity to self-rejuvenate and again there are very few studies which will compare this to PRP. At present we do not have any studies which give us any evidence that PRP may rejuvenate the ovary and at present and these are not present at the present time. The next use which is often used is using PRP with implantation failures and in with thin endometrium. And the aim is that it increases the expression of adhesion molecules, attracts stem cells, which may in turn stimulate endometrial growth factors. 
the studies are generally small and with a small number of cases. And in fact, we don't know how many times the cycle has been cancelled and how many trials have been done. And what we know at the end is results. Again, multiple studies have looked at limited evidence, poor design, and interventions have often been questioned. Other studies in which with signing cave and PRP was used, endometrial uh, growth tend, tended to improve, but there's no difference seen in the mean endometrial thickness, but they saw about a 20% live birth rate. So what is the problem with these studies? Many of them have poor designs, limited details of PRP preparations, in fact very little. PRP in addition may ha harbor leukocyte and cytokines and ET is often associated with success rates but it's not the only determinant. So in conclusion it's too early to conclude whether PRP works in thin endometrium and poor ovarian reserve. Unfortunately, a huge number of studies are case controlled. Impact of embryos to a greater quantity of hemopoietic cells is not known. And can we deliver this message free of bias? And this is what often happens with science. You know, you come up with a few papers which suggest that a treatment works and we are very eager to embrace it and not without a reason because we try to do our best for patients and sometimes when repeated failures occur we want to try and see what can help patients to get pregnant. Literature is full of promising treatment options but when put to proper scrutiny in well-designed clinical trials this has led to disappointment and this often occurs and has often been seen. And who says PRP is not one of them? Thank you very much. If you do like these talks, please share them, like the page and thank you very much.